Um, it's a pleasure to be here and see all of these aspiring um, business entrepreneurs. And I really appreciate you inviting me um, to come here and speak with this panel of distinguished women who are doing some amazing things. Um, my name is Sherry Tate, and I am the founder and CEO of Silver Moon Desserts. And um, before I uh, tell you about Silver Moon, um, I thought that I would share my story of how I became an entrepreneur. Um, there are definitely some similarities um, from some of the stories that you've already heard. Um, but basically, going back to the mid-90s, um, when I first moved to California after um, finishing graduate school in New York State, um, I came out here, and that was a time that I really saw was um, an innovation frenzy in Silicon Valley. So big companies were innovating, and then there were all of these startups. And there were um, the web-based startups, and it was the dot-com boom. And it was very exciting. And so I um, quickly got roped into kind of that industry, and I worked for a number of different startups. Um, some of them didn't do very well, but a few of them <laughs> did, as you can imagine. Um, but I got a really great um, experience on what it takes to be an entrepreneur. Um, what I saw was all of these people who were looking for the next big thing. What's the next big thing I can do that nobody has thought of, and how can I do it better and faster than anyone else? And so it, it was pretty exciting. Um, <coughs> During that time, uh, my role was typically uh, marketing or product management. So I would look at how do I take some crazy technology that these engineers built and um, explain it to consumers and hopefully sell it and make a little money in the meantime. <laughs> sometimes we made money, sometimes we didn't. Um, and I was also involved in what I consider building a company culture, which was a lot of fun. So. For example, one of the companies, um, I was the eighth employee, and we built the company to 80 employees. So, you know, you go, and pretty quickly too, so you go through a lot of transition where you're hiring people and trying to lose that culture <coughs> of when you first started. Um, one of the companies, um, one of the ones that didn't make it, it was a web portal, but um, we were a small team, and my boss went, said one day, let's go out this afternoon, he had his truck we're going to go buy a ping pong table. <laughs> and so we bought a ping pong table, and then we bought a foos table, foosball table, and then I got to pick up the bean bags that we had in the office, and we had margarita Fridays. So we worked, you know, till midnight every night all week, but then on Fridays, um, the CEO and I would go buy a big bag of limes and make margaritas and fresh salsa, and we would play ping pong and foosball. So, I mean, lots of crazy cultures. <laughs> Um, it was really fun to be a part of that. Um, but during that time, I, I learned a lot, and I started to think that one day I would like to have my own business. And working for technology companies, um, you know, I always thought about, okay, what, what is that next big idea that nobody's thought of that I can think of? And being working for a lot of tech companies, I was always thinking, okay, this is going to be a technology product. And in fact, I had a boss who he and I used to commute once a week from San Jose to Pleasanton, and he was very much an entrepreneur too. So we would spend the car ride there and back, talk, you know, brainstorming different ideas. And um, so I never quite came up with the technology product, but in the meantime, I was having fun with my friends and um, learning a lot about California culture and food and wine and <laughs> entertaining. And I bought my first ice cream maker. And so I was making, following the recipe that came inside the box for vanilla ice cream. And it seemed really wonderful, but I thought it's a little boring. So I looked at my cabinet and I had a bottle of um, Bailey's Irish cream. So I poured a little bit of that in. I'm like, oh, that's pretty good. And I'm like, what else do I have? And so I had these uh, pecan pralines from Trader Joe's. So I threw some of those in, and that was the birth of our most popular flavor today, which is our praline Irish cream. And so that was a hobby for many years. And I um, 
built up one of my cabinets in my kitchen that kind of looks like a Bevmos door, and I um, <laughs> have all different kinds of liqueur because it's really fun, um, making different recipes. And one day it kind of hit, and people loved it, and I quickly became the person that brought ice cream everywhere I go. And then I started looking at it, hey, maybe this is it, maybe it's not technology, maybe it's a food product. But I don't know that much about food products, so I started looking into the market using my marketing background, and I did notice that there was no company that had a line of liqueur-infused ice cream and sorbet. And so I spent some time researching that, figuring out how I would, how I would do that, and after five years of being at the same company, which was a long time for me, I decided that it was my decision point. Um, you know, if I'm going to do this, I need to do it now. And um, I left a good paying job um, to start my own business. And that was about three years ago. And I haven't really looked back. So that was um, the birth of Silver Moon Desserts. So um, what Silver Moon is, it's a line of liqueur infused ice cream and sorbet. Um, <laughs> there we go. Okay. Um, so right now our product is sold in um, specialty stores such as Zanatos, Drakers, and Dronicos. And we're also sold in white tablecloth restaurants across Northern California. Um, and we're just expanding into Southern California. Our tagline is Experience Heaven on Earth. And um, we do have some ice cream and sorbet here for you to try afterwards. So hopefully um, you will get to enjoy that experience. Um, the idea behind this line is that it's not a me too product. Um, all of our flavors are completely different than anything you'll see on the market today. So we're not trying to do a rocky road, although I have a very good friend who keeps asking me to make a rocky road. Um, <laughs> maybe with some Godiva chocolate liqueur or something. <laughs> um, but, you know, we're different. And Ben and & Jerry's was kind of a model for me in that regard. Um, they came out with all these wacky flavors and people started to anticipate what new flavor are they coming out with next, and that's kind of uh, my vision for Silver Moon. Um, the brand, in the past three years, we've won a number of awards, design awards um, for our packaging, for our um, product taste, our logo, um, and I, we still do a lot of marketing for the brand. Um, in consumer packaged goods, you do have to do a lot of marketing. We do demos in the stores that we're in, a lot of events. Um, we've gotten some really fantastic PR. We've been in the Oprah Magazine, Brides in Style. Um, we do a newsletter, and um, I'd like to mention that Melissa Young is our newsletter writer. She was my first employee about four years ago, and, uh, and now that she's working full time and going to school full time, she's still somehow carves out time to do a newsletter every couple of months for us, and she takes after Mar, and she's a fantastic writer, and we get lots of compliments on that. Um, we communicate with our fans via Facebook, and um, so basically, you know, we're still an early stage company. We're three years old, but working on um, building the startup business, and um, that's, that's how I got started. Um, I did want to just mention, I mean, we're a, we're a small company um, right now, we're two employees, so it's myself and one person who does the production for me. Um, but I certainly didn't build this alone, and so what has been helpful for me is networking and um, meeting a lot of people both in the industry who are maybe somewhat competitors but not completely competitors, and I've found, and if you're thinking of starting a business, talk to people in the industry. Um, I was afraid at first that, you know, it would be competitive or they might take my idea, but that's not the case. I found that people are really, really <coughs> open and they like to tell their stories and generally like to help each other, and so um, that's been very helpful to me um, because this is a conference about women 
network with other women. Women have been my biggest supporters, and um, I joined a group called NABO, which if you haven't heard of it, it's the National Association of Women Business Owners, and it's the most amazing group of women I've ever met. And I invited about 80 people here tonight, and three of my fellow NABO members are sitting in the front row, so thank you for coming. Um, but they really want to help you. People have been through this before, and people will help you find the tools you need to be successful. And um, I just really encourage you to take advantage of that, to network and to meet people. Um, and so that's kind of my story. Thank you. <laughs>